Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we are going to be doing a past exam question on genetics. Specifically, this question is on blood groups, and the level of difficulty is definitely hard or challenging because there are a lot of application questions, and there are a lot of questions where you need to explain yourself as to why you have the outcome that you received. Now, if you are new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make Make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. Now, if you'd like to pause the video now and attempt the question, please do so. Otherwise, we're going to get into how you unpack these questions, how you answer them for full marks. And at the very end of the video, I will also include a memo. Last but not least, if you haven't got your hands on your cheat sheet just yet, then you should head over to missangler.co.za. So let's dive into this question. So at the beginning here, it says a woman is identified two possible men that could have been the father of her child. Below are the DNA results of a DNA profile paternity test and a blood paternity test. Now, just a quick extra piece of information that's really, really important is that you cannot confirm if a father is the father based off of his blood group. You can just exclude fathers. And the reason for that is there are plenty of men who have the same blood group. So there are lots of men who are blood group A and blood group B. That doesn't mean that that is their child. However, there are certain possible blood group outcomes that are not possible if you are not that blood group. So hypothetically, if we're talking about dad, let's say dad is blood group AB and mom is blood group O and they have a child who is O, that cannot possibly be his child. We don't even have to do any more than a, a basic blood test because this child hasn't inherited any alleles from this dad because he's only got an A blood group or a B blood group to give. And this child is O. So where did the other O allele come from? Do you see what I mean here? So some combinations are possible, um, whereas others, it's just not, you're not able to actually confirm anything. But other than that, let's continue breaking down the question. So I want to have a look at our table. So our blood results here say the baby is O. Our mother is blood group B. Um, and then we've got two possible dads. Now, without even looking at the DNA profile, I'm not going to look there just yet. I want to walk you through how I would be able to determine the dad just from the blood group potentially. So remember, blood group O is, when we write it, is two lowercase i's for the alleles. So it'd be something like that. Now, then what is the mom's possible alleles? Well, the mother, she would have been I with a capital B. And because her baby has O blood group, she would have also had a little I and she would have given that I to her child. Now, out of the two other possible dads, we can actually work out what their alleles are. So dad one, um, he is blood group AB. So the only possible alleles he has is blood group AB like that. Whereas dad two is A. A like this, so he's got A blood group on both of his alleles, or he's A with a little I. Now, that means that dad one has nothing to offer to this child. So already I can actually come to the conclusion that dad one is not the father. Dad two, on the other hand, could be, and he could be this option over here because he's going to give this lowercase i. Now, let's go over to the DNA profile and let's actually confirm this. So, remember, when you do a profile, you want your alleles to match up 50-50 between parents. So, let's say, for example, I want to match all the mother's alleles to the baby. So, this one is matched to the mom. Let me see. I'm going down here. This one matches. This one matches. I'm just seeing if there is another one. Mm. I think that's it. I know that you might think, oh, this one, but um, no, it's not because it's slightly offset. And now let's do the dad. So let's see who matches up with the baby. So who matches with this allele? This dad. This allele matches with this dad. This allele matches with this dad. This one matches with this one. This one matches with 
this one. So I think it's uh, it's pretty safe to say that dad too is the father. Now we've confirmed it in both the blood test and the DNA profile. Let's go into our questions. So first things first, it says using the DNA profiling results, explain why dad too is the father. Now, it is an explain question for three marks. Remember, when you do an explain question, you need to have a statement and then a reason. In this instance, you'll need to give two reasons to get your three marks. So what is our statement? Well, we're going to say something like all the black marks that don't match up with the mother they match with dad number two. So what you're doing is, and I've shorthanded this answer, but your answer is all the black marks that the child has that do not match the mother match dad two, which is true. All the outstanding pieces are coming from dad two. Let's move on to our next question. So it says, explain why dad one cannot be the father using the blood test results. Now that is where you are going to use these alleles to help you support your answer. And so how are you going to structure it? Well, remember, we're going to do an explain question for three marks. So that means we need a statement and a reason and a reason. So first things first, let's start with the statement of the baby. So our statement is going to be something like the child's alleles is II because they make blood group O. Now, because of that, dad, your reasoning now, dad one is blood group AB, which means his alleles are I, A, and I, B. Now that reasoning leads you to your next reason. Because he is A, B, there is no way he could pass on the allele I, which is needed for blood group O. And that's your reasoning for three marks. Now, our final question says we need to use a genetic cross to show the percentage chance for the mother and dad too to have a baby with blood group O. So remember, a genetic cross is doing like a monohybrid cross. And for simplicity in this video, I'm not going to redraw the entire cross for you. I'm going to show you the memo and I'm going to point out the key things that you must include in order to calculate this. Now, before we do that, I want to remind you that the mother is blood group B and the uh, father is, as we've determined now, A. They want you to work with those. But remember earlier on, I did this little working out here at the beginning and I, I showed you what the mom was. Remember that this is important to identify the mom's alleles because you need to be able to use the correct alleles for the mother. And if you're thinking, well, how did I know for definite that that was the mom's alleles? Remember, the baby is O, so we've got to get one recessive eye from mom and one recessive eye from dad. Now, here is the memo, and you can have a look alongside here uh, for 231 and 232. You'll notice in question 232, there's another alternative answer. Our answer came from this particular one, but this was also an alternative you could have given. But I want to um, zoom in on and focus our attention over here um, on our genetic cross, and I want to show you what we are getting our marks for. So first things first, whenever we are writing out a genetic cross, we must include the P1 and F1 in the margin. That's what's going to get you one mark down here. Then at the beginning, we need to write what mom is and dad is in their phenotype. So blood type A times blood type B. You write out their alleles and that's going to get you individual marks. You then write out your gametes as we see here. You can do a Punnett square or a line diagram. I prefer Punnett squares, everybody. They're much easier to use. And you get a mark there as well. And you end off your answer by showing your phenotype. Um, in this instance, they showed it as a ratio. You could have also written 
written it as a percentage. The question didn't ask for a ratio. And at the very end, you get your final compulsory mark over here for saying they have a 25% chance of having a blood group O child. And we can confirm that by looking at the Punnett square and locating that child. You will notice that this question says any five plus one compulsory mark. The compulsory mark is over here. So you must give this one to get six out of six. The rest of the other five could be any of these five. Now, if you're wondering, I did not include any of the questions for 2.3.4 and 2.3.5. So you're not imagining things. We didn't do those questions in this particular lesson. I didn't think it was necessary for the focus. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.